So bear with me here a little bit. Uh, we're going to start off with something very, very simple. And then we'll take it up a notch, which will ultimately lead to a second video where we're going to take it up yet another notch. Let us begin. When we're testing for powers and grounds, is this a conclusive test? Well, it's binary, right? So if it didn't light up, yes, it's conclusive. There's an issue with the powers and grounds and we have to chase it. But if it does light up, that's not 100% conclusive. That's only drawing maybe 150 milliamps. And that goes double for these LED type test lights, which only draw about 50 milliamps. And a voltmeter that could tell us that we have battery voltage, yet only draws a few milliamps. We need to make sure that not only do we detect battery voltage, but that the circuit can actually carry a load. And something like this is often used. So you don't have to run out to a junkyard to obtain something like this. And you don't have to get gouged at your local parts store. They can be found online on AliExpress and they're quite cheap. Also on AliExpress are these cables. Set of five. They come with these nice stackable banana plugs. Colorful things. And bonus, three of those colors match exactly the color of the pigtails. Cut them in half, and we have enough for two sets of test lights. And these colors are intuitive, like which one would be our ground here? Correct. And of these two, which would be our lowest amp draw? Correct. So they vary a little bit, and they'll be around 0.6 amp on the low setting. And around 2.2 amp on the high setting. But they're stackable. And you can add the 0.6 amp to get close to like 2.8 amp on most of these bulbs. We've got one 1157 bulb, two filaments, and three load ranges. Now these little suckers can get real hot, like instantly. That's why it's useful to have a shield of some type. I share this STL. I printed this out of PLA and it's holding up. But the filament of choice, of course, would be PETG. Like this. If our powers and ground cannot carry the current, the light will be dim or non-existent. And if it can carry the current, it's going to be good and bright. So is that the final word on the health of our power and ground circuits? Well, uh, not totally. There are nuances between dim and full bright. Those nuances are made uh, even more difficult to tell apart uh, depending on the ambient light. You could be in a kind of a dark spot or you can be out there right in uh, bright sunshine. Which is why sometimes low testing is done in combination with a voltmeter. It's indicating battery voltage. But when the load is applied, there's a voltage drop. And some modules will start to misbehave at these voltage levels. And we might not have been able to tell just from the brightness of the bulb. And we haven't even discussed higher amp loads like this headlight bulb, which is a whole different beast compared to this 1157 bulb. Now there's a lot of moving parts here and a lot of wires, which can muddle up our thought processes and what was already perhaps a complex troubleshoot. All of this can be consolidated. There's a gadget for that. 